Disney has finally joined the rest of the industry in releasing home movies in 4K. They said they waited so long because they wanted more consumers to own televisions capable of watching movies in the Dolby Vision coloring format. So that begs the question, what exactly is Dolby Vision? And how does it differ from high dynamic range coloring? Find out, coming up. Hi everyone, I'm Isaac and this is Movie University. On this channel I do movie reviews in addition to informational videos explaining a lot of the techno babble that's out there in the industry. So if you like what you see today, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Walt Disney Pictures has been in the news a lot this year. Star Wars announcements, splitting from Netflix, and finally releasing home movies in 4K. Late 2015 and early 2016, studios began releasing movies in 4K, with the latter half of 2016 beginning the big focus on televisions displaying a wider spectrum of color known as high dynamic range, or high dynamic range coloring if you speak proper English. Not one to move with any sense of urgency, Disney is releasing its movies with full use of Dolby Vision, another form of high dynamic range coloring. So if they're the same thing, which is better? Here are 8 things you should know about HDR and Dolby Vision. Number 1. HDR is the most widely used and recognized standard for televisions displaying a wider color gamut than Dolby Vision. Nearly every television maker now sells TVs using HDR10, whereas of August 2017, only LG, TCL, Philips, and Vizio used Dolby Vision. Number 2. What's the difference between the two? HDR uses a bit depth of 10 bits and should more accurately be called HDR10. HDR just got an upgrade to HDR10+, which adds additional metadata for improved contrast ratio and coloring, a topic we'll get to in a minute. Switch over to Dolby Vision, which uses a bit depth of 12. Is that 2-bit difference that big of a deal? Yes, it is. HDR currently displays 1.07 billion colors compared to the 68.7 billion colors that Dolby Vision supports. More colors means smoother graduations between color and less color banding on the screen. With that said though, don't think bit depth makes content displayed more colorful. Its importance is when displaying different tones of the same color in a gradient. The higher the bit depth, the smoother it will be. And in case you're wondering, a standard Blu-ray uses 8-bit coloring or about 16.7 million colors. Number three, most televisions today do not support Dolby Vision because a majority of the TVs on the market only have a eight or 10-bit color panel in them. If you want a 12-bit color panel in your TV, be prepared to fork out a hefty stash of cash for it. Like all technology, 12-bit panels will come down in price eventually and will become the new standard. Number four, besides color, there's also brightness of picture to consider. Brightness on a TV is measured in units called nits. Movies on a standard Blu-ray are mastered at around 100 nits. A movie in 4K with HDR10 is going to be shown at around 1,000 to 4,000 nits. Dolby claims Vision Movie Masters will be anywhere from 4,000 to 10,000 nits blowing away HDR considerably. Number five, metadata is another category that separates the two formats. HDR10 uses what's called static metadata, and this means it uses the same settings for the duration of the content that's being displayed. HDR10 cannot adjust the color and brightness of the data being displayed on a frame by frame basis. Dolby Vision, on the other hand, supports what's called dynamic metadata. This gives studios greater control over how they want their image to be displayed. They can literally go in frame by frame and adjust the image to how they want it to be displayed on screen. The reason they can do this is because Dolby Vision's TVs have dedicated hardware capable of taking on the load of processing frame by frame adjustments in real time. Number six, HDR is an open standard and is royalty free. Whereas Dolby requires royalty payments from anyone who wants to put their technology on their electronics platform. This is the reason why so many manufacturers use HDR10. Number seven, today, most things are mastered in HDR10. You'll be hard pressed to find content being offered in Dolby Vision, but it is out there. Besides the availability of content and cost of televisions that can display Dolby Vision, you're probably better off just buying a TV that uses the HDR10 format. Number eight, if you buy a Dolby Vision TV, can you watch content in HDR10? 
Yes, you can because the requirements for Dolby Vision far exceed those of HDR10 on your TV. Your TV will be able to display the color gamut easily and it might even look a little bit better. This, however, does not work the other way around. To make things even more confusing is that other companies are trying to get a piece of the color pie. The BBC currently has its own HDR technology called HLG or Hybrid Log Gamma, which is being adopted for broadcast journalism. Additionally, there is already plans in place for a next generation HDR at 8K resolution. So which is better and what should you buy? Clearly, Dolby Vision is the winner as it has better color control for viewers as well as content creators. However, there isn't enough content on the market for Dolby Vision and since HDR10 is free for companies, there probably won't be a flood of new content hitting the market over the next few years. If you're looking to buy a new 4K TV, go ahead and buy whichever brand suits you and your budget the best. Almost every 4K TV sold now has HDR10 built into it and you'll be good with that for the next few years. Just be sure to do some research to make sure the color panel is 10-bit and not 8-bit. Let me know what you think of HDR10 and Dolby Vision in the comment section below and be sure to hit the subscribe button on your way out to see more videos like this one in the future. I'm Isaac and this is Movie University.